welcome everybody. Today we have a special guest. Let's give a warm welcome to my sister, Tori Makala, who is a medical student at USD. Thank you for having me. Tori is going to tell us a bit about food today. So here's my first question. Why do we need to eat food to survive? Food contains fats, proteins, carbohydrates, or carbs that our body breaks down to ATP. And ATP is a molecule that provides the cells with energy for work. So it's our cells' energy currency. It fuels your activity, your growth, and many of those bodily functions that keep you alive that you don't even think about, like breathing, digesting food, and keeping warm. What else is inside of food besides fats, proteins, and carbs? Food also contains vitamins and minerals that supply additional benefits to the body, but don't contribute to energy production in the body. Okay, so fats, carbs, and proteins are used for energy, and vitamins are molecules that do other things in our body, right? That's right. So vitamins keep our eyes healthy, maintain our immune system, strengthen our bones, and much more. Let's get back to those big molecules you talked about. Fats, carbs, and proteins. Do we need all of them? What do they do for our bodies and our cells? So carbohydrates or carbs make up the biggest part of the U.S. diet and come in three forms. Monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Monosaccharides have one single uh, sugar unit, disaccharides have two sugars linked together, and polysaccharides, or complex carbs, have many sugars linked together. Monosaccharides are the simplest form, meaning they're the easiest to digest for energy. All carbs are eventually broken down to glucose, which is a monosaccharide. And then glucose can be taken up by cells for use, or it can be packaged up and stored in our bodies for later. Kind of like boxing up your leftovers at a restaurant. So, you're saying that carbs are all about quick energy, but they can be stored for later. Is the U.S. diet healthy? Do we eat the right amount of carbs? Carbs do provide quick energy, but if we eat too many of them, it stops our body from burning fat. The fat in your body won't be used until all of the carbs are used first. The typical U.S. diet has too many carbs, so the body is forced to store a lot of fat. That doesn't mean all carbs are evil. You still need some carbs in your diet, especially healthy carbs from fruit and veggies. But you shouldn't eat too much junk food, which is often high in added carbs. What about fats? I've heard that fat's bad for you. Is that true? So we all need some fat in our diet, uh, and fats are the second biggest part of the American diet. Most of the fat we consume is not used immediately, but gets stored as molecules called triglycerides. Triglycerides are used for fuel only after all of those basic carbohydrates get used up. Triglycerides make up most of the body's fuel stores. The average person has enough energy stored as triglycerides to survive for more than three months without eating, as long as they have water and vitamins. Essentially, Triglycerides are our emergency supply of food. Fats can come in the form of cholesterol as well, which generally you hear about being a bad thing because it's linked with heart attacks. But cholesterol does play some important roles in our body and isn't all bad. So, some fat is good for you. It gives you energy, it's important in building cells, it keeps our hormones in balance, and it helps our bodies use vitamins and digest properly. What about proteins? Proteins make up the smallest portion of the U.S. diet. They're broken down into amino acids, which can then be used to make specific proteins in cells, or they can be converted into complex carbs or fat to be used as fuel for our body. Okay, so let me get this straight. Proteins are made of amino acids, and those are used to build things in our cells. So are proteins an energy molecule like fats and carbs, or are they more like building materials? Proteins do a little bit of both. They split their time between building things in the body and being converted to other molecules that can be burned for fuel. They're a jack of all trades, making them an important part of our diet. You talked a little about other types of nutrients in our food. Could you tell us a little more about those? The other nutrients that I had mentioned are ions like calcium and iron and all the vitamins that your body needs. If you don't consume enough of these vitamins or if your body doesn't know how to use them properly, you can suffer something called vitamin deficiency. Vitamin deficiency can increase your heart rate, hurt your immune system, and cause confusion, loose teeth, soft bones, and visual changes. That sounds serious. Vitamin deficiency is no joke. That leads me to my next question. Is any food fine or are some foods better than others? 
the chemical ingredients in the food you eat changes the type of chemical reactions happening in your body and how much energy is stored. For example, carbs are quicker to use, while fats provide more energy in each molecule than carbs. Additionally, different organs in your body prefer to use different types of fuel. So your heart, liver, and muscles like to burn fat for energy. Your brain and red blood cells instead prefer to use carbohydrates for fuel. Of course, it's more complicated than that. But overall, your body needs a balance of all kinds of nutrients for the different things it does to keep you healthy. So it sounds like it really matters that you get the right balance of nutrients in your diet. We can't just read the calories on the nutrition label. Some foods are better than others, even if the calories of fuel add up to be the same. The phrase empty calories is used to describe foods that you eat that only contain sugars and fats. They keep your body running, but they don't keep it healthy. Foods that are primarily composed of empty calories do not have proteins, fiber, or those important vitamins and minerals that you also need to keep your body healthy. For example, a small fast food french fry contains 365 calories, all in the form of fats and carbs and no other nutrients. A spinach salad topped with vegetables, hard boiled egg, and avocado contains about 350 calories, but with many more nutrients. The spinach salad has dietary fiber, vitamins A, B, C, E, and K, iron, folate, phosphate, magnesium, and much, much more. So some foods definitely do more for your body than others, but that doesn't mean you can't enjoy an empty calorie or two every now and then. Wow, we learned a lot today about the food we're eating. Thank you so much for taking the time today to teach us more about why we need to not only eat food, but also eat the right kinds of foods. Thanks for inviting me. I'm glad I could help. If my students want to learn more about food and nutrition, what are some good websites they can check out? So they can check out the uh, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, the American Heart Association, Mayo Clinic, the American Cancer Society, and the USD Food and Nutrition Information Center are all really great resources. Thanks again, Tori. Do you have any final pieces of advice for kids who want to eat healthier? Sure. So the number one piece of advice I have is to eat lots of different and fresh foods and avoid eating too many packaged foods. The healthiest foods are usually the ones you find on the edges of the grocery store. The fresh dairy products, nuts, lean meats, fruits, and vegetables. Cook and enjoy healthy meals with your family and only eat junk food like potato chips, candy, and desserts as an occasional treat, not an everyday food. Thanks for listening, everybody. And remember, Science is all about asking questions, making mistakes, and learning from them. Until next time, let your curiosity lead.